Hi everyone, it's Kara here from Boho Berry and today I am bringing you a video that you all have been begging for, absolutely begging for, for a little while now. And I was waiting until I was completely finished with my old bullet journal. I just moved into my new bullet journal at the beginning of June and today I'm going to give you a quick flip through of my second bullet journal. One thing that you will notice with this flip through, I'm going to try to make it as quick as possible. I've got over 200 pages to flip through, so I'm not going to pause and talk about each thing quite as much as I did on my last flip through. I'm not sure how long this video is going to be, so if it ends up being quite long, please forgive me, but I just don't want you to miss out on anything. So if you're ready, let's dive in. All right, so here we are, and this is the very first page of my bullet journal. You will see that I do have this little flip out over here. This is my color index, and I used that for the most part throughout my bullet journal, but really not a whole lot, so it's not something I'm going to be carrying over. I didn't find that I really needed to reference back to pages as often, and so I'm not going to be carrying that over into my new bullet journal. I do love the idea of it, but I just didn't use it as often as I thought I would. So I'm just gonna stick with the traditional route from here on out uh, with my regular index. So that's the first thing you're gonna notice. Then we'll flip through to my index. I will note that I still have to finish indexing some things. I'm gonna go back in here and go back past page 183 and kind of index the rest so that I can easily find everything. I've got this coloring page that I just cut out and put in here for the front. I've got a nice little quote that I love. This is my year calendar overview. These were some of my big goals that I set at the very beginning of the year. I have my original future log and brain dump, which I ended up kind of really not using a whole lot, as you can tell. I've got my level 10 life and level 10 goals, which I actually made a whole video about this. I'll definitely link that in the description below for you. I had a books to read list, which I got through a few of them, and then I have my savings goals for the year, a fountain pen wish list, the pen pal tracker. You can see I haven't really <laughs> kept up with this tracker either. Uh, one thing I'm going to say you're going to notice a lot through this flip through is there's a lot of things that I tried that really just didn't work out, and it's not a big deal. I do have quite a few things that are unfinished in here. It doesn't bother me. It's all a huge experiment, so that's just one thing I want everyone to keep in mind, that just because something doesn't work or you fall off the wagon with it doesn't mean that it wasn't worthwhile. They can all be great learning experiences, and that's one thing that I love about the bullet journal, and the bullet journal has definitely taught me to kind of get over myself a little bit when it comes to imperfections and mistakes and not give myself quite such a hard time. All right, so this was my first monthly spread of the year in January, and I had everything divided between all day, morning, and evening, and I had my goals on the right here. Had our plan with me challenge for January, my January tracker, my January memories a waiting on list. And when I first started my waiting on list, I was treating this more as a like order tracker. So anything I would order, I would write down on this list and check it off when items were received. Had my gratitude log for January. I've got some dailies right here. I'm going to kind of flip through the dailies pretty quickly. I was planning out a summer road trip on this side more dailies. This is my 52 week money challenge. So every week I pick a number uh, from one to 52 and I transfer that amount from my checking over to savings. And the idea is that you'll have a nice chunk of change saved up by the end of the year. These were some notes I took on a webinar I attended. More notes on that, more dailies. This was the PTL doodles challenge in the month of January. That was super fun. This was my couch to 5k plan. I actually ended up not sticking with it and I really want to get back into it soon and see if I can complete it. But you'll see, I started logging everything and then I kind of fell off after week three and stopped logging. And this was definitely a lesson learned for me is that I had already set up this whole tracker for each of the weeks and I didn't end up sticking with it and now I have these blank pages. But 
you live and you learn. I had some Q&A questions here, more daily pages. This was a spread I did to track my progress in my Wreck This journal. And honestly, I haven't done anything with it because I've been so busy all year, so I don't have anything recorded in here. I've got more daily pages. This was my Calendex. And as you can see, I really only used the months that I have actually within my bullet journal. So for my new one, I actually set it up just as a four month Calendex because this was kind of wasted space. Got more dailies, more dailies, some ideas for my next bullet journal, more daily pages. This was my Inko Rimo tracker, which again, I didn't really finish filling out, but I thought it was a great idea at the time. I've got my February layout here. You can see it's pretty much staying the same there. More daily pages. My plan with me challenge for February, February tracker, memories, rock your handwriting. I've got my gratitude log for February. And then this is a spread that I did to kind of brainstorm how I want my days, weeks, and months to go, all my different tasks that I need to complete. And I've actually done something similar in my new bullet journal, so this is a little outdated, but just to give you an idea how, how I mind map to try to kind of figure out my schedule for the week. More daily pages. This Why Do I Plan was a response to one of the Plan With Me challenge prompts, so I really liked that. More dailies. This was something that I created. These are if-then lists. What happened is I was actually noticing that my energy fluctuates a lot from day to day or even within any given day. So I wanted to have a list of tasks that I could refer to. If I, had, if I have extra time and I have a lot of energy, then I could pick something from this list. If I have extra time and I'm feeling kind of sluggish, then I would pick something from this side. And this is something that I actually refer to quite often when I have extra time just to kind of see if there's anything kind of to jog my memory really and say, oh yeah, I could, you know, I could tidy up my desk or I could meditate for a few minutes or whatever it may be. Got more daily pages. This was my trip planning for when I went to San Francisco in March. And this is where I started my weekly spread. And this weekly spread has kind of evolved over time. And you'll see that evolution here as we flip through as well. Got more daily pages. This was a really awesome quote that I found. I ended up finding out that it was not actually a Buddha quote, but I love it nonetheless. So that's staying in there. Another weekly spread. This page is something I copied down from the Getting Things Done website. It's kind of an overview of the Getting Things Done method by David Allen. So I love having this in there. It's something nice to refer to. Got more daily pages. This was my packing list for San Francisco. And then this is my March layout. And you can see in March, I switched from that big calendar kind of style overview. And I switched to the more traditional monthly log. So that's where I would just log a little snippet of what happened each day. And I had my tasks and goals for the month. I had my challenges. After that, I've got my memories, my tracker, my gratitude log again. I've got my weekly. This is where I went to San Francisco in March. I was at the Creative Live Studio and these are some of the notes that I took while I was there. So those few days are filled with notes. More notes. More daily pages here. These are some doodles I decided to try out. Um, every time I travel, I love to have a where I went list. So these are all the places I went to while I was in San Francisco. We've got more daily pages. You can see my weekly kind of starting to evolve here. I'm adding a little bit of color. This is the GTD organization workflow. And this is directly from the Getting Things Done book by David Allen, but I loved having that in there for reference. This is a spread I did to kind of organize myself and get ready for my shop opening on May 1st. Got our dailies. This is where my weekly spread starts to evolve again. I start adding color in different places. Got more daily pages, more doodles. 
And then this is a quote that I really loved. I decided to kind of dedicate a page to it. It says, don't wait for extraordinary opportunities. Seize common occasions and make them great. Weak people wait for opportunities. Strong people make them. Love that. This is a little spread I decided to do when I inked up some of my pens. I wanted to kind of keep a record of what ink was in what pen. This was my planning spread for when I went to Atlanta for the PlannerCon and pen show. And so I've got my travel information here. I've got my packing list on the right. And then we go into April. You'll see I've still got the log, the traditional log set up with my tasks and goals. Got our challenges, memories, tracker, my gratitude log. Now you'll see here in April, I actually kind of fell off the wagon a little bit on updating my gratitude log and I hate that. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I really am sad that I kind of fell off of doing that, but it is what it is. Apparently I was way too busy getting ready for my shop opening and I, I'm so sad about that blank space, but again, it is what it is. We move on. We've got our daily pages here. My weekly spread is continuing to evolve and change. This was some notes that I took from a blog post over at zenhabits.net. And if you don't read this blog, it's really awesome. It's Leo is all about personal development and obviously he speaks my language. So I took some notes. I really, really loved it. Got more daily pages, tips on life. This was a rock your handwriting challenge prompt. So I decided to put that in my bullet journal. Got more daily pages, my weeklies more dailies and then mixed in here you'll see this before you go list. This is a list I made before I went to Atlanta and I wanted to make sure that I had all of these things done before I left. I've got more daily pages. This was some journaling I did when I was in Atlanta. I had such an amazing weekend there and I just wanted to have that record within my bullet journal itself. Got another weekly spread. Got more dailies and then my 35 acts of kindness list. These are 35 different acts of kindness. I kind of brainstormed by looking online and coming up with some ideas myself as well. But these are just some things that I would like to accomplish before I turn 35 next year. We've got my whole 30 round two planning page. And then don't judge me too harshly, but I actually totally fell off the wagon on updating my Whole30 food log as well. I promise you I was eating clean and following all the rules. I just, honestly, I was so busy and I just, I have no excuses. I just didn't fill it out. Moving on, we have one of my favorite doodles of all times. This actually started out as something I was not very happy with. I think I started with this little flower in the middle. I really didn't like it. And I decided to just keep going anyway. And it ended up being one of my favorite doodles I've ever done of all time. So moral of the story there is just because you don't like it at first, keep going. You might enjoy it. Got more daily pages. This is the weekly review checklist from Getting Things Done. Got another weekly spread. And this is where I actually started kind of implementing some concepts from getting things done. So you'll see my weekly spread changes a little bit. I've got my current projects here. I've got Horizon, which are upcoming projects. And then I've got my little waiting on list right down here. Another quote that I really loved. I've got more daily pages. And <laughs> this, I actually, I had left some room. I believe I was getting ready to film my May, yeah, my May plan with me video. And I left a few pages before I started to kind of finish out the rest of the month. And Saturday, obviously I did nothing. <laughs> and then Sunday was the shop opening. And obviously I was, honestly, I was just super, super busy. It was crazy when the shop opened. So unfortunately, I've got kind of these two blank days, but that's okay. And blank pages. Maybe I'll come back and do some doodling here. I don't know. Then we have my May setup. I've got my May log and projects, which I never even took the time to fill this out. You can see I totally fell off with updating little snippets about my day. The month of May, y'all, was in for me. I was so, so busy. 
honestly just so busy with orders from the shop that I really didn't have a whole lot of time for much else. So you'll notice throughout the rest of the month of May, like I didn't even fill out the prompts for the plan with me challenge. I've got the rock your handwriting, but I kind of fell off after day seven. My memories, I only have two that I logged and then I was just like, this is the busiest month ever. <laughs> my tracker I did keep up with, which is good. And then my gratitude log again, I just fell off. I was so busy during the month of May. I just, I didn't have time for much else and I wish I had a better excuse, but that's, that's it. <laughs> so we've got my weekly spread here, more dailies. Pretty much all I could handle during the month of May was doing my dailies and weeklies. I just didn't have time for anything else really in my bullet journal. So you'll see my weekly here, my dailies, and then here you'll notice this is Thursday and then it jumps right into the next week. So that means Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I didn't even look at my bullet journal. Like it was that crazy. So I've got my next weekly spread there. This week I didn't have time to color anything in. I just kind of went for it in black and white. This I didn't even finish, but I need to because it's planning for my summer road trip at the end of the month. And then I've got another daily that I didn't color in because I was busy. And then I actually decided to do a little journaling in here to kind of talk to myself about why, why nothing is being done in my bullet journal because I was so, so busy. All right, we've got another weekly here. And then a few dailies, and then I believe, yep, that is pretty much it. I went Thursday, Friday, Saturday the 28th, I actually ended up driving down to go visit my husband. And by the time I got back, it was time to move into my new bullet journal. It was the beginning of June. So I decided to kind of commemorate the ending of this bullet journal with a quote. And I decided to search for quotes on imperfection. And the reason being is, as I'm sure you noticed, there's a lot of imperfection in this bullet journal. There are blank pages, there are unfinished tasks, there are scribbles, there are days where I didn't color in, there are completely missed days, there are things that I tried that didn't work. There is such a combination of imperfection in this bullet journal, it's ridiculous. So I chose this quote, I really, really loved it. It says, if you look closely at a tree, you'll notice it's knots and dead branches, just like our bodies. What we learn is that beauty and imperfection go together wonderfully. So I wanna to talk to you about imperfection and I wanna to talk to you about the fact that Yes, there's a lot of stuff missing in this bullet journal. Yes, I fell off the wagon on a lot of things there towards the end. And honestly, while it bothers me a little bit, it's really it really doesn't bother me. And the reason being is that all of this is a record of my life. It's a record of my time over the last few months. And looking back on this is just a reminder to me especially when I see blank and unfinished things, it's a reminder to me that there was a reason that those were blank. There was something that was going on in my life and I even journaled about it in several different places. But there were things going on in my life that kept me really busy and they were very happy things. And so I don't see any of this blank space as a negative. So I want you to think about that when you're kind of beating yourself up over blank space or missing a few days. I think it's important to be gentle and be kind with ourselves and realize that it's okay. It's absolutely 100% okay. And the beauty of the bullet journal is that you can just turn the page and move on, which is what I did several times in this notebook. And I'm sure it's not the last time it's going to happen to me or to you. So I just want to close you with that thought and I will look forward to seeing you all on Friday. Bye.